Hi guys and welcome back to another video with us, the FPL way, where we will be previewing game week four. My name is Ray. My name is Dan. Dan, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Um, really enjoyed game week three. Um, some brilliant games. We finally got to see Manchester United win for the first time. We've had Liverpool lose. They've still not had a win yet. Um, Chelsea, Man City dropping points. And of course, Arsenal. Top of the league. I know, right? You must be living it, Ray. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good, Sam. I'm very good. I mean, uh, as the listeners will know, we took a week break. Uh, it just wasn't working out for us logistically. But uh, as a football fan, uh, of course, uh, I'm delighted the way we're playing. Um, just, just identity, isn't it? That's something you and I have spoken about a lot. Just identity. Go out there, attack the game, give it your all, and see what happens. And I think Arsenal have been doing that, and I definitely think Manchester United did that against Liverpool. Absolutely brilliant. I'm very, very happy for you, buddy. Really happy. Yeah. <laughs> but as we know, we're not called the PL way. We're called the FPL way. So we got to go <laughs> straight into <laughs> your game week review. So Dan, 61 points. You must be very happy. And as we yeah. saw earlier, a rank of 15.4K, absolutely phenomenal. Please, why don't you give us a summary of how your week went? Yeah, it was really, really positive, mate. Um, well, first of all, from the last stream, I had Trippier. Uh, in and I took Trippier out to bring in Perisic. Um, it was a very, very last minute call. Um, I really, I really left it to like the last three minutes until the deadline, just until mm. I get enough information. And I found out that Perisic was going to start, and I, I trust the source what I what I found. Um, so I just went with that, and really, really happy. Couldn't couldn't go wrong. Fantastic twelve pointer. Um, yeah, but overall, um, we start from the top. You know, Ramsdale. I thought Arsenal were fantastic. Um, they didn't look like they were going to concede a goal. Uh, it was complete control. Um, I don't think he made that many saves. I think I think one or two at the top of my head for Ramsdale. But it was a nice, mm -hmm. easy, clean sheet. Um, the defense, you know, for the other three, it's James Trent and Cancelo, really, really poor. Only one point from all three. Um, really disappointed in James. Um, not as an actual as an asset, but the fact is he was playing in a back three, not playing in a, in a preferred right wing back. So that was I was a little bit disappointed in that. But I, I do think in the future he will play in his preferred position. Uh, I just I I can only point down that he played there because I don't think Tuchel wanted to. Um, change uh not a winning team but a team who did really well in game week two yeah. against spurs yeah um and then it was between neto and andreas uh, who was going to start so i went to andreas and um fantastic i just thought for someone who's 4.5 million he's I, I don't think he's a 4.5 million i think he should at least be around five to six million you know he's on set pieces free kicks he's in the number 10 role um very key to the way Fulham play I thought he was brilliant um again uh we've got Martinelli returned three returns and three matches um and then Jesus um I guess we're quite quite lucky really because the captaincy uh uh Last week was very. It was very divided between Salah, Jesus, and Haaland. and thankfully, you know, we got the right pick in the end. But I thought Jesus owners and captainers they were really unlucky not to have got more. Um, it was a Jesus scored a really good goal just near, I believe, around the 80th minute, and uh, it was called offside. Very, very close call. So you would have been looking at a goal and an assist. Um, and Haaland, yeah, you know, he got got his goal. Um, I don't think he got many chances, really. Um, but what a game it was, Newcastle and Man City. It was a cracking game. So, yeah, so 61 points, 15K. Um, 
I'm really, really happy. I, c- I can't, I can't go wrong, you know. But a long way to go. A long, long, long way to go. Absolutely, that's brilliant. So going into your uh, game week four preview, first of all, um, we are collaborating with PlanFPL.com. Uh, we're very happy to be using their planner this season going forward. And Dan, you've made one change. Mm. Yeah, as you can can see, I brought in Aronson uh, for Neto. Um, yeah, Neto was dropping in price. Um, so I have two free transfers. And I didn't want to use the full two because I think the team looks it looks fine mm. as it is. Uh, yeah. There was three players I was really really interested in for that for that Neto spot, and it was Rodrigo, Harrison, and Arison. Um, <laughs> and I know that was a bit of a tongue tie. <laughs> That's a lot of um, sounds. <laughs> that was a lot of sounds. That was, uh, but. <laughs> You know, Arison. I've been looking on his data. I just think he's he's very very exciting to watch. Um, he's five point five million, so it was an easy swap um, to, to bring in. Um, and I think he's a. I think he's going to be a great differential. Lee's fixtures are really nice coming up as well. Um, but yeah, so other than that, Salah captain. I'm pretty nailed on Salah captain. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Salah or, or Haaland, but I I, I think Salah. Hundred percent. I think they got the fixture. I think Crystal Palace will be difficult uh, for City. Well, I expect City to win, but I don't think it's going to be easy. You know, Crystal Palace has started really, really well, and I guess you could have a case for Jesus as captain. I think mm. you could expect a, a, probably near enough the same divide as last week for um, who who gets the armband and the percentages throughout the whole community. Um, uh, but I I reckon I expect Salah to be. Um, the highest owned captain, I think. Um, other than that, Ray, I think I think that's it. I'm going to be rolling the other transfer, and um, yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I think that's the right thing to do. Really, I mean, we'll go to me in a minute, but I think midweek is gonna that's gonna be fun and games because it's gonna be our first midweek of the season, isn't it? So mm. uh, I think. Rolling that extra transfer is important because I think midweek there's going to be a few spanners in the works. So uh... I think so. I think so. Um, I just want to touch on that, Arison. You know, out of the three, I really would I would prefer to get Rodrigo. But, Likewise. Uh, but it was just I would have to drop a player out of my team, mm. which I really don't want to drop anyone out. Um, I'm happy to go for someone like Arison. Uh, I think he's a good price. Um, I'm very, like I said before, he's just re- he looks really, really good on the eye. So um, yeah, I could lose out on some points on Rodrigo or Harrison, but I'm really happy with 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 Harrison. So, but yeah, yeah, very good. All right, let's go to me. So it was uh, yeah. also a very solid week for me. Um, here's something funny. The only players that didn't return for me are the four best defenders in the game. Trent Robert, crazy, James Cancelo. Who in the world would have thought that? For you, it was three of the same back four um, yeah. and Diaz. So Ramsell as well. Um, didn't really perform very well. I'm, I'm, I'm quite concerned about him. He, he's not really playing well, but our defence are playing quite well. Perisic, you know, I've put put my head on the line there, isn't it? I mean, you and I were mm. messaging two minutes before deadline about it, and I said to you, I'm going to play him because uh, this was the moment, isn't it? This is what I was waiting for, and um, he was excellent. Uh, Consider yeah, James really. Robertson, nothing. I got a grand total of two points from the four best defenders <laughs> in the game. Uh, Andreas Pereira, I was always going to start in this game because, uh, you know, he's 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 main creative guy probably to feed Mitrovic. Martinelli, superstar. Salah played poor, but he's just the king of FPL, isn't he? Played poor, got return, got bonus point. Typical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, he did. He did. Jesus, just, he's playing like a premium, bud. Like a proper premium. You know, we're, we're, we're going to have to start considering mm. captaining him soon. I know we won't at the moment because of effective ownership, but every time Jesus plays, he looks... Uh, He's got the bit between his teeth. And uh, Haaland, yeah, again, Haaland is 
had a couple of chances, took his chance really well. Movement is just off off the scale, isn't it? He, he's absolutely yeah. brilliant. So, uh, got any questions before I kind of go to my preview? Well, I mean, I it's may... very similar to you, really. <laughs> yeah, well, you're just copying me, aren't you, Ray? <laughs> no, I think um, the captaincy, I just want to question that because I think we were very lucky to get return from Salah. Like you said, he was, it was, he didn't have a great game. United were fantastic, and uh, Manasia marked was man marking him so well and didn't get a sniff, absolutely mm. nothing. But like Harlan Jesus, um, I mean, Jesus, like I said, Jesus could have got a goal in, and it was offside, it was so close, like a toe. And and Harland go, actually, I, I, I recall that Foden again did not pass to Har- Harland. It's same it came same scenario as is uh, game week two. Um, so, yeah. are we just lucky that we got returns? Are we, are we kind of overlooking yeah. these two, Jesus and Ireland? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't think we expected Manchester United to approach the game that way. I thought it was going to be no. uh, a good old counter attack no. job, but they actually were magnificent. So Liverpool mm. couldn't breathe; they felt suffocated, and Manchester United. It should have been more than 2-1, I'll be honest with you. I think Liverpool got away with just the one goal deficit. However, no, you you make a fair point. But I mean, Bournemouth away was always going to be a game that you'd expect us to win comfortably. Yeah. And Manchester City currently are the most creative team probably. With Arsenal, actually. I mean, fair play to us. You know, we're creating a lot of opportunities. But I just think with Mohamed Salah, he's got the historical data, isn't it? That's something we like to look at. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, Liverpool played badly and Salah still got a return. You're right, we did get lucky. We got very lucky because Jesus should have got a couple of goals with his assist and Haaland could have got a couple of goals. And Salah yeah. literally didn't have a chance. That that was not a high expected goal chance mm. that Salah scored. Mm. But um, he just knows what to do, doesn't he? <laughs> no, he does, doesn't he? He does. But yeah. I, I think, you know... I, th- I think you're right. You know, I mean, this week coming up is against Bournemouth. Mm. Like you saw the way you boys play Bournemouth. I'm expecting Liverpool to explode soon. <laughs> you know, yeah. in scoring goals. I'm, I'm expecting it. Um, how close were you uh, with Perisic to keeping him on the deadline day? Because I know you were interested in a, a couple of players. Cucurella was was one of them, I believe. How close were you to transfer him out? 30 minutes before the end, I made the decision to keep Perisic because, um, you know, not me personally, but I follow a few sources or accounts that I rely on regarding their sources. And they said that the prediction amongst the experts was that Perisic was going to start. And um, like I said, I thought, look, if Perisic doesn't start this game, then you know to take him out, even if they're playing mm. not in Forest next, because you can't have three games and he's not starting for you at five and a half million. So the idea was Cucurella, actually. Still a player I like, actually, going forward, Cucurella. But Perisic obviously did the business. But we're going to have this issue with Perisic every single game week. If he's going to start, he's not going to start. I don't yeah. think he'll start the next three games. I think he'll start two of them. You just have to get lucky with him. So I could see him starting against Nottingham Forest, benched against West yeah. Ham, play against Fulham or, you know, something rotationally like that and because Tottenham's games aren't the first games I don't really think we're going to get a leak either so we're just going to have to hope he plays mm. you know, yeah so. I agree and I understood that when I brought him in as well I knew we we're going to have you know this this stuff at the back of our mind but the way I saw the way I think about it is that he's a kind of a player who can come off the bench and and bring a return you know like he did in game week two you know he only touched the ball for about four or four times and he managed to get himself assist from a corner. So he's just one of those players, you know, and I, the, what I saw of him, um, I thought against was I thought he was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, so his yeah. first start of the season, I thought he was really, really good. I do expect him to start and I, I, I reckon you're right. It's very close whether he starts the next three. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So in regards to my preview, uh, I've made one change as well, which is Neto also to Aronson. Uh, I caught it before the price drop of Neto. 
So mm. um, very similar to you, really. I mean, the only difference here is Robertson. So uh, I think after this game week, if, if Liverpool don't return, if they don't keep a clean sheet or Robertson doesn't get a return, then I, think I, I have to take him out because you can't not return against one of the worst defences in the league. You just can't. Mm. So uh, I think the time is nigh. Um, would Aronson really just have to... It's not really a game for Brighton necessarily. It's just I had two free transfers. I really want to use one. And Neto is being rumoured with Arsenal. So, you know, I have to mm. look at it of, you know, Neto could get benched this game week. And also Aronson, it's a long-term pick. Like I could see... It is. I could see keeping Aronson for like seven game weeks. They're, they're, the fixtures are very, very attractive after Brighton but Leeds are a different beasts aren't they they're a different team under mm. Marsh so yeah very I'm very surprised how well they've started mm. um so for Robertson it's it, I think you're right though Ray I think one more game week then if he doesn't get a return it's got to be a transfer out I think I, I couldn't wait that long I think four game weeks without a return um, it, it's time to go for me. There's so many other players who are performing in defence um, in, in, in between the five, five million, five point five million bracket and um, and midfield. You can invest in there. Uh, I can understand you holding him because it's the Bournemouth game, and surely you should expect a clean sheet. Exactly. Surely. Mm. Um, so yeah, I understand why you kept him in. Wicked. Cool. So. A lot of you guys will uh, know that, uh, well, a lot of you guys know that we like to do threads. So Dan has his analysis thread, which is uh, our flagship piece for the FPL way, where he goes through analysing, you know, the biggest conundrums, looks at the data, obviously using fantasy football fix and also draft hand. And me, I like to dabble a bit when I do threads with players. So rather than do a thread on Twitter, I thought I'd do a thread on our video, Dan. And guess who we're covering? Brendan Aronson. <laughs> of course. We love him. <laughs> USA. 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 Yeah, man. Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's just been um he's just been fire, hasn't he? The 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 intensity and everything. We'll go into mm. my data in a minute, but yeah. He is a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> He is. He is. Um, I think the key thing is right. That is the the stats look. They look okay. But I think the more important thing uh, about Amundsen is is the eye test. He just yeah. looks amazing. Uh, he looks fantastic. He's like a mini Rafina, but Rafina did have those stats on paper. I, but I, I do think Amundsen will. He will slowly build. And get those stats to, to where he should be. How he's performing, you know, it's it, he's he's really he's brilliant. I mean, he was he, you know, he's he's on certain set pieces. Um, he's he was playing as a number ten role um, last week. Um, full of energy, full mm -hmm. of confidence, and a and a good character. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm hoping. You know, I think we have to just bide our time with Amazon. You know, we're not expecting massive returns week on weekend, but I think he will steady the ship, I think, with some some good returns. But no, exciting. I'm good. looking forward to seeing what you have to say, Ray. <laughs> Get man. your popcorn out. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I've got so I got <laughs> So I think what I'll do here is I'll just remove us for a moment, uh, just so people can kind of get into the data a bit more. So from what I've seen with his heat map so far, Dan, is he's definitely taking those kind of really advanced positions that always excite me in my threads. Um, he's definitely hugging that touchline on the right side. And it kind of shows in his yeah. average positioning. You know, he's kind of taking a lot of that inside forward positioning. So what he's doing is mm. there's a lot of hugging the touchline and looking to cut in and looking to penetrate because he is a left footer as well. So, you know, when you're playing off the right, as you know, when you're left foot off the right, a.k.a. Salah or Saka, you know, you always have this uh, habit of always cutting into your left foot. So I saw a lot of that with the heat maps through his first four matches, so three matches so far. And the average position, he really excites me because he's getting in these middle areas as well, you know. So he doesn't mind floating mm. too much, which is interesting. What are your thoughts on that before I move on? No, yeah, I, 
I said he was playing as a number 10 role last week. I believe he was. You know, I think Rodrigo was playing number 10, but because of Bamford being injured, Rodrigo's playing up front. And um, and as you can see, you can see his average position drifting near mm. to the middle. But you're right, he is he is a right winger, isn't he, naturally? Um, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and, and when you go into his shots as well, very... very <laughs> If you actually focus a bit on his shots, the shots aren't exactly in the most crazy areas in regards to, you know, getting solid returns. But when you mm -hmm. actually look at his touch maps on the right, so all the blue dots over there, is he really is yeah. getting the ball in really nice areas to try and create things. So but when it's you what look you at... said there, isn't it? Mm, Sorry. Exactly. Sorry, it's what you, no, no, it's no. What you said there, isn't it? Exactly. Um... You know, not, a, not at all. I mean, you know what I like is he's, wants to get involved he's driving yeah. with the ball without the ball you know when you go to if, if i could when you go back to his heat maps this is obviously just his yeah. movement with and without the ball he's in those areas coming off the right and it's showing within his touches as well isn't it that he really really wants to get involved to try and obviously get the best offenses for leads isn't it mm-hmm well this is perfect this is exactly what you said you know he coming off the right he likes to come into his le left favored left foot and uh, and you can see in a, in a good central areas he likes to get a shot on goal as you can see there's one two three four four of them outside one inside the box and one goal yeah for him so yeah you can see exactly how he wants to play brilliant so as you know i love to do a couple of screenshots here and there so oh, here Leeds. against leeds united they are Leeds United against Wolves. <laughs> is, <laughs> this is a perfect example of him putting himself... Sorry, this is a perfect example of Aronson putting himself in a position where he can cut into that left foot. And as you see here, is that the player that's unhighlighted, who's not highlighted in the first screenshot, he actually fed the ball and looked for that decoy return run. But what that allowed Aronson to do is turn into the area and then get a shot away. It didn't go in, sure. but this was very, very early into the game, which is really exciting for me because what he's doing is he's having the he's having the courage and exuberance to get into these areas to get shots off. Mm. And as FPL managers, we love that, don't we? We like selfish players. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, anything on that before I move on to the next one, bud? No, I no, I think you're spot on, bud. And then here I got a couple more. So this, so the first part was actually the own goal, but we all got excited to think that it was the goal. Yeah. It's once again yeah. running off the and against Chelsea as well in the last game. I haven't even included the goal because Mendy is just silly. <laughs> but <laughs> he is busting the gut to get into these goal scoring areas. Against Wolves, as you see, the arrow pointing in, get into the area. And also with the Chelsea example I've given as well, is he yeah. is breaking late into the areas to get into those goal scoring areas. So remember, in the beginning of the season, I was talking about this with Grealish. I said, yeah. I see Grealish is doing this, but then he wasn't, and now he's injured. I don't know what's going on. Aronson at five and a half million, Dan. He could be an unreal asset because mm. I think he's obviously been instructed to make these runs, and sooner yeah. or later, he is going to be getting these tap ins because. The ball is breaking out wide and he's busting a gut to get into the area. This is not a coincidence now. This is There's, there's a method to this. And sooner or later, he's going to get in those positions where he's going to go get these tap-ins and these strikes running in from the yeah. middle. Yeah, 100%. 100%. You know, he's, it's only going to take time for him to, as soon as he, he gets more games under his belt, build the experience and in the Premier League, he's going to get into these areas, which is fantastic to see that he's trying to get into these areas. I mean, because what he wants to do is just, he can see an eye for a space and try and get a goal, you know, and I'd rather have a player at that price bracket and who has, who wants to be explosive, who wants to score goals, you know, not just the creativity, which he has, but for what you're showing us is, you know, he wants to get a shot at on goal. And yeah, he, he wants to score, and he's very—he looks like a very clever player. He's such he's quite a young lad, though, isn't he? He's—he's. He's, yeah. I mean, very, very young, and first time in the Premier League. It's very, 
it's good signs, and hopefully we could be the the two men who who got there first. Yeah, we can we can hope. <laughs> you heard it here first, yeah, because he's he's very lowly owned, and he's not really the player people are bringing in from Leeds. You know, it's yeah. Rodrigo, of course, but um, I think Harrison's actually got more transfers in as well. But this is me. Just yeah, I, I haven't looked at this one, but in regards to transfers in and stuff, but. In just three matches, he's already doing this. He's still getting used to his exactly. teammates, used to the structure, used to the identity, and he's doing this, Dan. It's it's only good for us mm. owners. So uh... yeah, I spoke to um, to a couple of good Leeds um, um, fans, and I basically asked them how number one is he nailed, and mm. that was the first question I said, and they said one hundred percent, as long as he's fit, he's nailed. And um, and the last one was they said was he's very, very, very important to how they lead to play, um, and that was really, really interesting for someone who's you know it's his first season, never played in the Premier League. Um, it looks like he's he's ready for the pressure, ready for the challenge. Yeah. So yeah, because you know, you're, right. Going how- you're right. He's replaced Rafinha. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um. But yeah, like I, I really like him as a he's he's brilliant. He's really impressed me, and you know, and let's hope that we went the right way rather than going the Rodrigo way or the Harrison way, <laughs> you know. But yeah. I think well, we couldn't good... afford him. <laughs> we couldn't afford him. That's why we bought in Harrison. Let's not tell anyone that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So. Before we get onto our favourite section, for me, it's community questions. I just love it when we yeah. go through these questions love together. It. Yeah. Uh, please like, share and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at the FPL Way, where we do game week analysis. Um, we do our predicted 11s. We do threads on footballers. You know, We really try and engage with the community. And also on YouTube as well, just, just type in the FPL Way and you'll find us there. And Dan and I try very hard to upload every week when we can. But, you know, family and kids and whatever. So, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> let me go to community questions. So, the first one is from Jack. Come on, man. Jack, Jack. is the man. He never lets us down. He really doesn't, does he? No matter what happens, we always got Jack. <laughs> so, um, okay. I think Dan will go with you first. Is uh, He's asked a lot, but he can ask what he wants. It's Jack. One, mm-hmm. downgrading 8 million mids to the likes of Zaha, Gundo, etc., what are your thoughts, Dan? So obviously the mid price midfielders have been smashing FPL so far. But what are your mm. thoughts on uh, downgrading an eight to these kind of players? What do you think? Well, I've, I think the best two eight, mid, eight million midfielders, um, Diaz and Kulaveski. Um I think uh, Zaha, I really like the way he's, he's playing recently. He's playing in a very um, an advanced position. He's playing up front. Yeah. Um, so he's very key to the way Crystal Palace play. He looks full of confidence. Um, Gundogan, yeah, I mean, he's come up with a bit of a surprise. He's played every all the three matches now and two returns and three. Uh, but I just think I wouldn't drop down to one of these two just yet. Number one, I think Zaha, I think Crystal Palace fixtures are they're not great. They've got Manchester Well, they've got Man City and then it gets pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, but I would personally, if you if you got the likes of Kudovsky and Diaz, I would obviously hold. If you had someone like a Mount or Saka, um, I think I, I quite like I quite like the uh, the punt on those two. Um, Gundogan, it's just as it, well, it's always going to be the same, isn't it? It's expected minutes, but the, the way he's playing, I think realistically, we're always going to say this about Gundogan. No matter what, it's just the pet roulette. He's he's always been his expe- expe- expected minutes has always been you know it's been up in the air. So I think if you're going to go Gundogan, you just got to go for it, and you just got to know that it's a chance he's going to get benched. Um, I think that's simple as that. But I don't like to to be that kind of manager myself. Uh, but what about you? I mean, Gundo has got a special place in my heart <laughs> from two years ago, <laughs> and. Mm. Uh, it was the last thread I wrote on him as well. And I said, you know, wait a couple of weeks. I think we're here. I think we're here to that couple of weeks. The thing about the popular 8 million assets is they got good fixtures this week. So, you know, Mount's mm. at home to Leicester, Saka's at home to Fulham, 
Diaz is home to Bournemouth. Madison away to Chelsea even because Chelsea are defending poorly and Madison's still returning, isn't he? And mm-hmm. Kulazewski is... Uh, who have Tottenham got? Who have Tottenham got? Spurs have got... <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I, should, I, should, I, should, I, should, I should put in some... Uh, I should put in some elevator music. Oh, they got Nottingham Forest away, of course. Uh, so of course they have. All yeah. all eight million pound midfielders, Jack. They got good fixtures. So I wouldn't take them out this week, but I won't take them out this week. In midweek, maybe then you can assess because if Saka doesn't do something against Fulham, despite me defending him a lot on Twitter recently, if he doesn't perform against Fulham, then I think you've just got to ship him out. He's eating too much money and they're better Arsenal assets who are cheaper. So, um, and I think transitioning that into the next question, I I guess I'll answer this, Dan, is Mm -hmm. uh, do you think Tierney will get many starts? Risk Zenchenko minutes. Jack, we'll go to a predicted 11 later as the last section of the show. I just feel Arteta won't change the lineup just yet. Not for this game week. However, like we were talking earlier, is that we do have our first midweek happening. In regards to Premier League or Champions League, you know, I, I, I don't, uh, I'm not really thinking about the League Cup too much, and uh, it'll be really interesting to see then what happens in the the middle of the game week. We're at home to Aston Villa. I think for this game week, we're definitely going to keep the same eleven. We're playing too well. Uh, I still feel Zinchenko <laughs> during the game. Zinchenko is a left centre mid. Yeah, that's what's happening during the game. That's where almost all his positioning is. If I wrote a thread on him, I expect the heat maps to be in the middle of the park. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think he'll eventually be there on paper, but Chaka has just been fantastic. We should, he should not be benched, and neither should Zinchenko. No, and I think I've, I think I've said this to you before, Dan. That Tierney, he has to prove his fitness to be available, let alone play mm. games. Yeah. So um, there's no risk to me there. So uh, yeah, I mean, and if we go to number three. Um, this is a good question for you, I think. Is Haaland worth having when Pep openly says he won't play every game? Is he hustling us? Mm, no, I think he's being honest. <laughs> First time he's ever been honest. And he's actually said to the player who's going to come in to, re- to to replace him, and that's Alvarez. Yeah, this question's going to get really heated, I think, next week. I think this week it's pretty cool. I think we're going to ex- I'm going to expect Haaland to, to start. It's next week is where everyone's going to start getting a little bit worried. I think he is worth keeping. Um, and I'm at this point, I am not phased about what Pep said. I'm expecting Holland to come. If he, yeah, he's going to be benched and I could expect him to come on and for what 30, 20 minutes perhaps. And he could, a player of his caliber can easily get a goal or an assist. Um, so I think it is worth it. I think the question with you, Ray. What what do you think? Would you what do you think of his comments? He's kind of done this before, where he's played with our emotions. But I think with this one, it's true. Uh, I actually believe this one. Uh, a bit like you, I think he'll definitely play against Palace, and then I could see him benched in midweek, and then play Saturday or Sunday whenever they play. So. Yeah. I think we just have to gauge it week by week. I know that's a really, really weak answer for me, but mm. I think it is with this one a week by week. I think we're playing him on Saturday or Sunday when, when they play this, in game week four, sorry. And then in game week five, there could be a decision there. there honestly, there could be a decision there, what we do. But yeah. if I take out Harlan, I'm going to want to bring him back in. And I don't really want to do this hokey cokey so early in the season. So I agree yeah. with you. In 20, 30 minutes, you could come on and just... He's so good that yeah. you're right. He could get like two returns in 20 minutes, couldn't he? Quite easily. Fresh as a yeah. daisy, you could see it happening. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. And the last point, I think, is I think many managers will be looking at Kane to replace him because I think, let's face it, I think Kane is is probably guaranteed more to play mm. uh, more minutes in, in that tough uh, in the tough that week coming up. And um but it's what we said though, just to back that up. If he's, I, Holland has that potential to be explosive, and I think he's more explosive than Kane. And if you bring in Kane in, I'm, I'm very sure that you're going to want to bring Holland back in. 
I'm pretty sure because I I expect Holland to out score Kane this season. It's just a matter of time. It's like a ticking time bomb where he's going to get big, big returns. So and he can add up to those, you know, being benched. So yeah, cool, excellent. Thank you very much, Jack. As always, next one, another guy who's like a ride or die, Gareth. Um, yeah. Would you wildcard this team or go one more week and see how it goes? Got one free transfer. So I'll read it out. It's very similar to all we have. Yeah. Ramsdale, <laughs> Ramsdale, Trent, Robbo, Cancelo, James, Cucurella, Bailey, Salah, Martinelli, Jesus and Haaland. Benches, Ward, Neto, Andreas, Archer. When I look at it, Dan, I just hate the look of Bailey. I hate his face. So, uh, otherwise, everyone, <laughs> otherwise, everyone else I really like. I think it's a top, top team. So I, there's no way I'd wildcard this team. Hell no. But what do you think? Uh, yeah, it's the fit might go with my first instinct, and that is no, no way. Um, I personally think you could just roll this this week. I think Bailey will play. I think it will start. Um, yeah, and I, I think you should bank that transfer in. I think it'd be and it would be very useful for next week. Mm. Um so one hundred percent Gareth, no way would I be wild card in this yeah. team's a solid team, mate. Yeah, I, I think we don't even have to go so deep into it. I totally agree. His even if Bailey doesn't do anything, he's got so yeah. many good players who could do something, isn't it? Like the double Chelsea defence, yeah. I still think is a viable strategy personally. Yeah, and I also got to think you've got to ask yourself if you want a world card, and um, what players are you looking to bring in? I mean, if you're not if you're not making more than four or five changes, what's the point of wild carding? Yeah, exactly. Four, yeah, exactly. It's the kind of target I look at: four, five, five to six. It, if yeah, it's not worth making, you know, three or four changes. I just don't think it's worth it. Um, and like I said, I don't know who you're going to bring in. You've got a good solid. It's a good solid team. It's a good template there as well. Precisely. Perfect. Yeah. We'll go to our last question from Ged. Thank you very much. Is it time to start selling Liverpool defenders or Allison? So I was rattling off some stats to Dan that Trent is the second most sold asset. He's got like 360,000 teams that he's been shifted out of, and I just cannot believe it. So, uh, Dan, you go ahead, and then I got a whole speech to make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, you're absolutely right. I can't believe he's been he's transferred out that many. That's that's crazy. Um, no, uh, no, definitely not. So I'm guessing you would have either Ellison and Trent. Um, I would keep both for this week and assess for next week. Yeah, and yeah, I I think I think I think Liverpool are just. That game week away from getting big, big returns. They, it's not like they haven't played well. It's just they're missing that final, that final pass. And and, and I think the midfield, the central areas, is is where they're weak at. And I think that's where the, the, they're lacking some creativity there. So it's it's coming. It is coming. They are going to get big returns, mm-hmm. but one hundred percent. Just reassess. Trent for me is is he stays for me pretty much until he's injured. You know I. I really believe in this play. He's brilliant. If you had a Robbo, um, it'd be gone mm-hmm. next week if no returns. And yeah. potentially Allison as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the trend one is just insanity. I mean, I, I was, I mean, 200 points, 160, 208 points, 180. The guy is maybe the best defender we've ever had in this game. We were arguing that he was underpriced at the start of the season, which I feel he is. And, yeah. um, People are using him as a cash cow to what? What? He will get one return and a clean sheet, possibly against Bournemouth, and everyone's going to bring him back in again. It is insane yeah. to me, Dan. Insane. Yeah. Of course. He's still he's still forty plus uh, percentage owned, but I am I am I'm flabbergasted. I mean, with Robertson, okay, I get it. I mean, he he hasn't really got high ownership anyway. I think he's like nine percent or something like that between nine and eleven percent. He's been shifted mm-hmm. out by 100,000 managers. But even then, the reason I'm not taking him out is because they're playing Bournemouth. 
if yeah. they were playing against Leicester, I would have taken them out. If they were playing against Villa, you know, teams which I'm a bit more confident can score against them, or maybe he'll struggle to get a return offensively. Yeah, I take him out. But Bournemouth is like, he's very lucky he's playing Bournemouth for me. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have shifted his ass out. I think you're right. <laughs> Hundred percent, hundred percent, and you know the the way Arsenal played against Bournemouth, um, and not um, look Arsenal playing, you know they're playing a bit better than Liverpool right now in better form, but they're also good with the ball, keeping the ball possession wise, and I think I'm expected to see Liverpool do that, have full possession, and that suits Liverpool much more, suits Trent a lot more, um, so. This is it. I think this is the last game week, 100%. Yeah, perfect. I think patience is gone, but it is. Salah and Trent for yeah. me are season keepers. Like, I, I'm yeah. not taking either out unless, well, I shouldn't say that really, but I could foresee myself having both of them for the whole season. Trent and Salah. 100%. Perfect. Wonderful. So we'll go to the last section, which is predicted 11s. Now, mm. I am killing Dan. At this game. Well, <laughs> I don't think it is exactly... It's not hard, though, is it, realistically? You know, <laughs> um, Arsenal are a bit brilliant. They're playing absolutely brilliant. Like They're going to keep the same team. They've kept the same team. Look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll probably share it on Twitter. Um, but, yeah, I just, <laughs> it's just copy and paste. I think... It is. When we, it is. I think when we play Villa, I can see a change uh, because, you know, the games are starting to come thick and fast now. So in game week five, yeah. I can see a change because it's a midweek game. I'm really good. But um, against Fulham, I, I think we'll go with the same lineup. And and one of the things I want to mention as well is it's kind of the first game that I've seen White actually be a fullback. He was making a lot of overlapping runs, which uh, eventually yeah. turned into the second goal, the second Erdegaard goal. Mm. So, uh, yeah. But apart from that, nothing to see here. I, I think everyone's playing so well. Um, we've got strength in depth now, haven't we? We've got, we've got some really good players on the bench coming on. Tierney, Tomiassi, yeah. Vieira eventually, Smithrow, even Nketiah can do a job. You know, I've always liked El Nene. He, put, you know, he puts in a shift. So um, it's good to see. So I think I could just move exactly. on, Dan, unless you've got something to say. I'll just move on. Well, no, I think, well, just one point. I know we mentioned back about Saliba again. I think we have to mention a little bit. What a goal he scored. Incredible. Mm. You know, we mentioned it at the first stream. He's been so impressive. And Odegaard as well. He was another one we he kind of mentioned. He was really, really good. This is, uh, this is, why, I'm, so... this is why I'm saying don't, don't sell Saka this week because Odegaard had not, no real data and then suddenly he gets two goals. Yeah, I get that. It's a good point. It's a good point. But one more game week for Saka. One more game week. Yeah, again, agree. 100%. Agree. Agree. Mm. Brilliant. And let's go to the mighty you and I. (laughs) We finally got a win. Oh, my God. Without Maguire. I'm telling you, I don't want Maguire in that lineup. (laughs) I don't want him in our lineup, but unfortunately, (laughs) we have. But. You know, so Varane and Lissandro, they are my first two centre-backs. And they were brilliant. Absolutely. They worked so well together. Hmm. Um, they were so quick coming out with, you know, coming out the ball, passing out the back. It was it was just a great understanding. And um, and Varane's got pace. He's got yeah, great oh, pace. Yeah. Always has. And yeah. Maguire, he's, he's just a... He's like a double-decker. He's just ridiculous. You know, he's... <laughs> He's slow and he's he's. I, I'm really pleased he made that decision to bench him, and I don't expect him to start anytime soon. Not yet. You got expect... one. You got one change here where it's, there um, is. Yeah. You expect Ilanga to be benched and Martial to come in. I mean, saying that Martial actually did set up the second goal. So yeah, you yeah. Know, you... I do. I do. I do expect. Um, Elanga to be benched. I thought Elanga did really well. I don't think he put a foot wrong in the first half. He came off at the second half straight away and Martial came on. So that mm. says a lot. And um, I do expect... Mar- I think Martial is um, Eric Ten Hag's um, preferred striker. Yeah. Um, and I think it's what you said. I think you said you said to me that Martial, there's plenty of quality there oh, in him. Man. It's just he just needs that, that manager, that arm around the shoulder. 
You know, he needs that's someone to tell him that you're a good player. And I really think yeah. that's I really think that's true. So look, he's had a lot of lot of chances. I think in some managers would have probably have got rid of him by yeah. now, but yeah. this is his opportunity to really shine. Um so I expect him to lead United this week, Rashford on the left and Sancho on the right. I they all all three of those players have a great link up. Great, great link up. So perhaps Ray, this could be my first correct predicted lineup. But I'm probably a bit worried about McTominay. Maybe Fred can come in there, but I don't Is think Is Casemiro too early? Is Casemiro too early? Oh yeah, Casemiro. Um I think so, yes. I would say hundred percent, yeah. I don't think everything Ed's gonna push him in straight away. Um it's too risky. You know, Southampton's not the easiest fixture. They press well and as we've seen, United struggle against the press, you know. So yeah. I just expect just to stick with the winning team. One change made and um, Casemiro will, will come on in the second half, I'm sure. Excited to see how he goes. Gets on for us. But yeah, um this this is it. Brilliant. Um I gotta add to the Martial, and I've said it with others as well, is uh He's more talented than Sancho and Rashford, in my opinion. I honestly think the guy's got absolutely everything. And if if Ten Hag can unleash the beast inside Martial and strengthen his mind, mm. Martial is elite. I mean, he's 25. <laughs> 25, 26. Crazy, the, the, the guy's still a baby in regards to his development. So if, if Ten Hag gets yeah. it right, which I think he could, then um, we're looking at a guy that will get 20, 25 goals this season. He's that good, in my opinion. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah. I do agree. I do agree. I think we think we've got the right manager to get um, some of our players, get the best out of them. You know, we've got, yeah. a, pro- we've got a proper coach. Yeah. So this is an opportunity to many now. So, yeah, good luck to him. And I hope he does well. He is a talented player. Brilliant. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. Once again, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us at the FPL Way. Follow myself and Dan, who are, um, you know, our links will be in the uh, description of the YouTube video. And also, please make sure to join our league as well. You'll see the league code in there as well. Dan, all good? Yeah. All good, Dan? All good. You yeah. froze for a minute. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Can you see me? What? <laughs> I can, can you hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can as well. So, guys, <laughs> may your arrows seriously be green because the midweek is going to be insane. So, it's a good bye from me and it's a good bye from the Dano. Goodbye. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs>